Hey Kingdom Builders, welcome back to The Altar. And for those of you joining me here for the first time at Kingdom Wealth Ministries, a special welcome to you. We are in the fourth installment of the ABCs of Biblical Wealth series, and today's teaching is brought to you by the letter D. And the letter D stands for dominion and dependency. Dominion and dependency. Dominion, to have dominion for people of God has been a mandate from the creation of man on this earth. If you go back into the book of Genesis, one of the mandates of the Lord when God first created man was to be fruitful and multiply and to have dominion, to have dominion. And so the reason why you have to learn dominion is because you have to know the mindset the mindset that God wants to raise you up in. It is a mindset, a mindset of dominion. A lot of people don't have dominion because they don't have the mindset of dominion. Somebody type it in the comments, the mindset of dominion. Have the mindset of dominion. What does dominion, dominion mean? It means to rule, to reign, to have control, to have authority over, to own. God is saying in order to attain wealth the biblical way, dominion has to have, has to have, has to be a foundational principle that you build your empires on. Dominion, dominion, dominion. And the dependency piece comes in to, um, to, so that you learn how to depend on God and that you don't become prideful as the Lord continues to manifest, to manifest dominion into your life, but also to know that people are going to be depending on your dominion and your stewardship of the things that the Lord is about to bless you with. So without further ado, let's just jump right into the teaching, starting with scripture. Genesis 1 26 says, and God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, after our likeness, and let them have dominion. Somebody put in the comments, man is supposed to have dominion. Man is supposed to have dominion. Glory to God. Have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth. How many of you know you are supposed to have dominion over all the earth? A lot of you don't have dominion over all the earth right now because God hasn't risen you to that level yet, but it is coming, which is why you're learning this today. Somebody type it in the comment in the comments. It's coming. That's why I'm learning today. It's coming. That's why I'm learning today. That is exactly why you're here today so that you can learn these things. Amen. Amen. So he said, have dominion over the fish of the, of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. You know who understands this? billionaires. Billionaires really understand this. And the reason why, and the reason how you can tell that billionaires understand this is because they show it through their philanthropy. If you look at the things that most billionaires, not all, most billionaires give their money to, all of their philanthropic pursuits goes towards stewarding the earth, stewarding the earth. So a lot of people, they feel very led to give money um, to, to combat climate change, for example, that is exercising dominion. You know, when they hear of certain animals going extinct, and if there are organizations that need money to make sure that these animals continue to still exist on God's green earth, there are billionaires that will give money and support and financially back those organizations to make sure certain animals don't go extinct. So are you understanding why? One way, for example, to exercise dominion and what is going to be required of you as God begins. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit on this. Thank you, Father. I 
feel the Lord on this. God is saying that you are about to be increased where his wealth is concerned. And he wants you to have this mindset now so that as he grows you, as he elevates you to a level of extraordinary wealth, you know what he wants you to do. You know what he wants you to do. He wants you to use your finances to steward the earth and to have dominion, to have dominion. A lot of the reasons why people don't have dominion today is because they don't have the money to have dominion. They don't have the resources. And yes, you can start with one bird in your backyard. You can start with one animal. If you see a creature hurting, yes, certainly, whatever you can do in your own means. But God is saying he is increasing you to a level of wealth where you have to learn dominion. And that is why I'm here today teaching you. Amen. 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 Lord, we praise you and we thank you. Genesis 128. And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. Thank God for fruit and multiplication and replenish the earth and subdue it and do what? Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air. And guess what? Every living thing that moveth upon the earth every living thing that moveth upon the earth. If you can think about every living thing that you know that moveth upon the earth, then God, that will let you know what God is showing you here. Think about everything that moveth upon the earth. God gives us dominion over these things. And guess what? God also gives us dominion over people. Dominion over people. If you don't, if you don't know, if you don't believe it, let's go a little deeper. Judges 14, 4, at that time, the, Philistine, the Philistines had dominion over the Israelites. The Philistines had dominion over the Israelites. They ruled the Israelites. They ruled God's chosen people. Let's not forget, the Israelites were God's chosen people and still are today, glory to God, God's chosen people. But the Philistines at that time had dominion over the Israelites. And then God raised up people. God raised up David, for example, and he went uh, um, against Goliath with that sling shot. Glory to God. He defeated Goliath and ultimately the Philistines themselves were defeated. Amen. But there are certain periods of time where God will give certain groups of people dominion over other groups of people. Oh, Jesus. Slavery in America. If you can think about how people of color came from Africa Africans came from Africa because there were certain groups of people that had dominion over Africans at that time, whether the Africans gave it away. And the Lord gave me a revelation about this whole thing about slavery and all that. And I, and I pray he releases me to talk about it soon. But there are certain groups of people that exercise dominion. They took this word to heart and they exercise dominion over other certain groups of people. And God allowed it for a certain amount of time. But I am here to declare to you today that groups that were month were that used to have dominion, those groups will no longer have dominion over certain other groups of people. And that is why you are receiving this this teaching today because your ancestors may have been bound, but you yourself are coming up out of dominion of other groups of people. If you catch what I'm saying, type it in the comments. You know exactly what I'm saying. Time is up. Time is up. The tides are changing. And that's why you have to learn these things. Because when you come up out of Egypt, when you come up out of bondage, you need to be taught because you don't know how to do it God's way. And glory to God, he has sent a servant to teach you, a servant to teach you to do it his way. And a servant that can prophesy to you the times of the day, the times of the day. And now is the time for God's chosen people of this time and this season to have dominion. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Daniel 3, 37 through 38. And this is Daniel talking to Nebuchadnezzar. Your majesty, you are the king of kings. The God of heaven has given you dominion and power 
Daniel again talking to Nebuchadnezzar as he was interpreting this dream that Nebuchadnezzar had. The God of heaven has given you dominion and power and might and glory. In your hands, he has placed all mankind and the beasts of the field and the birds in the sky. Wherever they live, he has made you ruler over them. You are that head of gold. Glory to God. Men and women of God, people of God, there are times when God will have you have rule over certain things and certain people. Um, to make it modern, when you think about companies and corporations that you work for, for example, to an extent, they have dominion over you. They say and control what time you get up because you know you have to be to work at a certain time. That is dominion. They have dominion. There are certain corporations that have dominion over when you can take a vacation, Nope, you can't take it this week. You can't take it this week. You can take it in March. You can take it in March. That's when you can have time off. That is dominion. And going back to the day of Nebuchadnezzar, if you can remember, the Babylonians had dominion over the Israelites, similar to how the Philistines had dominion over the Israelites because God had given it to them. So sometimes when we sin as a group of people, when we sin as a nation of people, God says, you know what? I'm going to raise up another group of people and I'm going to give them dominion because they didn't properly steward what I gave to them. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you declare and you decide in your heart that everything that has come before you in terms of the destruction, the um, the mishandling and mismanagement of the resources of God stops with you, stops with you. I pray in the name of Jesus that God has so risen you up to the point where you can accept the mandate of dominion and properly steward that mandate. And that acceptance piece, because some people don't even believe that they are to have dominion. When they think about having dominion over people, listen, if you don't want to have dominion over people, then you are not going to be wealthy. God gives certain people dominion over people because they expect, God expects you to steward it. And these people are going to depend on you and what you do with what God has entrusted in your care. Amen. Amen. We'll get to more of that later. But what God, what does God want us to how or, or exercise dominion in? What are things that God wants us to exercise dominion in? Um, for example, the seven mountains of influence, that's arts and entertainment. God wants us to have dominion over arts and entertainment. And I spoke about this in the 444 video. I broke it down. Somebody typed, she broke it down in the comments. If you watch that video type, she broke it down in the comments. So go watch that video if you haven't already, because I go into detail about the seven mountains of influence. But for the sake of time, I'm going to um, kind of rush through this here. So he wants us to have dominion over the seven mountains of influence. That's arts and entertainment, business, education, family, government, media, and religion. Okay. That's the seven mountains of influence. God wants us to have dominion in real estate where we build massive structures because he is entrusting to our care, the wealth, the wealth of the nations to be able to build massive structures, to build churches. Also, for example, having dominion over real estate in the name of Jesus. All of the earth is our God's in the dominion and the dominion is his to give us. He has given us a portion, a portion to be able to build. Some of you will build small buildings. Others will build big massive buildings. If you can grasp and have the capacity of building massive structures, then if you can believe it, you will receive it, especially if this is confirmation to you, where God has already begun speaking to you about building massively, building massively in Jesus' name. 
He wants us to have dominion over investing. He wants us to dominate the stock market. God wants us to dominate the stock market. The children of God should have domin dominion over the stock market. Amen. Because what happens when we have dominion over the stock market? Then people aren't being oppressed. People aren't being taken advantage of. We do away with corrupt leaders in the name of Jesus. We put everything in its proper place because we are God's hands and feet on this earth, even in the stock market. Amen. Amen. He wants us to exercise dominion in commodities. People need to buy commodities, silver, gold, platinum, palladium, uranium, diamonds, copper, oil, gas, grains, food, agriculture, fiber, cotton, livestock, for example, exercise dominion in this area. God says the, the earth is yours. The earth is yours to have dominion over, to have dominion over. And yes, I know for a lot of religious folks, you want to say, oh, the earth, the, the earth is the Lord's. The earth is the Lord's. Yes, indeed. And I just said that the earth is the Lord's, but he gives us dominion over the earth. Amen. Amen. I read it in Genesis 1. Go up, uh, rewind a few a few minutes so that you can read those scriptures again. God gives us dominion. He wants us to have dominion over commodities. Exercise your dominion in territories. God is giving a lot of us rule over certain territories. He is taking the evil down. He is judging the wicked and he is installing Christians, men and women of God, people of God that are going to have dominion over territories. And with that dominion comes dependency. People are going to depend on our rule. They are going to depend on our reign. They are going to depend on our leadership. Amen. Amen. Geographical areas, regions, certain nations, God is giving us dominion. And if God has already begun speaking to you about that, put it in the comments. I'd like to know who this is confirmation for. Amen. Amen. He wants us again, like I just read through the scripture, he wants us to have dominion over certain groups of people over certain groups of people. And this does not mean to take advantage of people, to abuse people, to oppress people. But when God gives us dominion over people, essentially he is saying, these groups of people, I want you to lead them. I want you to care for them. I want you to use your resources to help them. This is what the wealth is for, ladies and gentlemen. Somebody type it in the comments. This is what the wealth is for. This is what the wealth is for, to properly care for God's people. And that is a form of dominion. So when God said, have dominion over the earth, he means properly care for it with the, the resources that God has entrusted you. Amen. Amen. About this dominion over people. Um, I want to give you an example from scripture. So let's talk about jo Joseph. You all could recall Joseph had a dream. And in that dream, God showed him where he would have dominion over his family. God showed him in a dream, his brothers and his father, his parents bowing down to Joseph. So God was showing him that he would have dominion over his family. And even to the point where his brothers got jealous and started looking at Joseph with a side eye like, oh, so you're saying... God is going to have you to have dominion over us? Yeah, whatever, whatever, bro, not going to happen. But what happened, even though they sold Joseph into slavery, what ultimately ended up happening? Exact, exactly what Joseph saw in the dream, exactly what God showed him in a dream. Somebody put that in the comments. It happened like God showed him. It happened like God showed him in the dream. Here's why I want you to put that in the comments. I want you to write it out because God has given you many dreams 
many dreams, just like Joseph. And I want you to see and to catch that the same way it happened in Joseph's life, it is about to happen in your life. Amen. Amen. So type it in the comments so that you can connect with this word, connect with this word so that you see that things that happened in biblical days are about to happen today in your day. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So, so ultimately what ended up happening? Joseph rose in power. He rose in influence. He rose in dominion in Egypt. And there was a drought in the land where his brothers were still residing to the point where they had to come to Egypt and they had to come see Joseph. They had to come see Joseph and what ended up happening. They had to bow down in humility before their brother, just as God showed it in the dream. And Joseph had to give them provision. He had to give them food and, and, and money. Amen. And he brought them into Egypt and had them partake in Joseph's wealth. That is dominion. That is dominion, dominion over people. Yes, indeed you can. And you will, a lot of you will have dominion over people. Again, it's not to take advantage of because Joseph did this with humility. He didn't take revenge on his brothers. He took care of his family, okay? So this isn't to, to abuse God's people and to take advantage is to take care of them. Amen, amen. When God gives us dominion over people, this doesn't mean we own or enslave them. This means that there are certain people and groups of people God has entrusted us to lead and make decisions on their behalf. If you want to attain wealth, real wealth, you're going to have to make decisions on the behalf of other people. You're going to have to learn how to properly make decisions and how to make great and wise decisions like Solomon did. Amen. So when you think of people like this, think elected officials, think business people, CEOs of, of, of corporations, chairmen of certain of, of corporations, for example. Think of kings and queens, presidents, okay? The Lord is, is raising you up to be these types of people in the name of Jesus. That is who I am talking to today. This is what is in your future. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Proverbs 22, 7, entrepreneurs, I see you. Yes, entrepreneurs, who just said that? Jesus, who just said that? Who just, as I was talking, who just said entrepreneurs? Because I heard it in the spirit. Type that down in the comments if that was you. Glory to God. Proverbs 22, 7, the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is the slave to the lender. The rich rule over the poor and the borrower is the slave to the lender. Okay, De Deuteronomy 15, 6, for the Lord your God will bless you as he has promised and you will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. You will rule over many nations, but none will rule over you. So let's take it back to Proverbs 22, 7, the rich ruling over the poor, the rich ruling over the poor. As God raises you up in wealth, you begin to be a ruler over the poor. You begin to be a ruler over the poor. When God said you will, in, in Deuteronomy 15, 6, you will lend and not you will lend and not borrow. God is, is combining in this message, in this teaching, the two to let you know that the borrower is a slave. The borrower is a slave. And we're going to talk about this later on in the, in the biblical wealth series. But the borrower is the slave. As you become the lender, you will dominate the poor. And, and I say that with all due respect to anybody that considers themselves to be poor. I say this with all due respect. It is not God's will for us to be poor. It says in the word that we are to be lenders, not borrowers. We are to be above and not beneath. Glory to God. He has given us dominion. And that is what dominion is about. When God raises us, as he continues to raise us to 
to a certain level, there will be more and more people that we will be ruling over and they, a lot of them will be the poor. So you come up from underneath that poverty, come up from underneath poverty, come up from underneath the sin that causes people to be impoverished, even generational sins. A lot of you need to go back into your family history. When you look at your finances, take a look and see who caused this. Was it a generational thing? Did my, did my mom teach me to spend all my money? Was my grandmother involved in witchcraft to, to the point where now this whole family is poor? Oftentimes, poverty is connected to sin. And we are not to be a slave to sin either. So when we think about dominion and when you learn about dominion, know that it is very much encompassing of wealth as well as poverty. It shows you how much power you have and God is about to give you to have dominion over the poor. And again, that's not to abuse, that's not to oppress. But when you think about, for example, people who build low income housing, that is for the poor. That is for the poor. When people have organizations, nonprofits that help people who are struggling financially. And those of you who are struggling financially now, just know that it won't always be that way. God is increasing you in your dominion. And as he increases you, you will then be able to help other people who are where you can where you're coming from. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand not just the heart of the father, but the mind of, of the father as it relates to biblical wealth and dominion? Amen. Amen. So God is raising you up to a level of wealth where you will have dominion over the poor. That is not to oppress them, to insult them, but to take care of them. And oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is revealing to me even now to use your wealth to raise up the poor so that they don't have to be poor anymore and they can become, uh, they can be installed in their rightful place in dominion in the kingdom in Jesus name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody put in the comments from poor to dominion, from poor to dominion. And if you are an author, if you care to write a book about that, write a book about it. If you want to hire me as your coach to coach you along the way, I have one more spot available for coaching. Amen. <laughs> amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. God said the borrower is the slave to the lender. And he also called us to be the lender, not the borrower. You get what the Lord is saying? Amen. I want to exhort you, um, brothers and sisters, because there has been such teaching that has gone out that has, even from the pulpit, even from the pulpit that has made God's people feel um, like we are not supposed to have dominion. Uh, and it has been such a satanic agenda to try to get people to think in their minds that they are not to have dominion, to not have dominion. I want to come against that mindset right now in the name of Jesus. And I want to encourage you to think in terms of dominion. You are a child of God and it is your mandate. It is a mandate from God. It is a mandate from heaven because remember God said, let us make them in our image and in our likeness. He was speaking with the heavens. He was speaking in heaven to man. Amen. So it is a mandate from heaven for us to have dominion. You are to have dominion. So if there are things rising up in you where, where you feel less than, let me tell you, God is bringing you up and wants to elevate you to a level in your thinking where you understand the principle of dominion to have reign and rule and control and dominance in certain areas and certain areas as it relates to your unique gifting, as it relates to your unique calling. Amen. So think about your calling for a minute. 
Think about, has God shown you that you are to build a real estate empire? Well, God is saying, build the best, build the most massive, dominate, dominate, dominate in the name of Jesus, dominate. Has God shown you that he is sending you into the medical field, that you are called to be a doctor? Dominate, dominate. You are a child of God. You can dominate, dominate the area, dominate the industry, dominate the territory, dominate the system, dominate. You are a child of God and you are his hands and his feet on this earth sent here for such a time as this to dominate and to rule according to what God has given you, according to your gifting, according to your anointing, rule and dominate, rule and dominate. You are the head and not the tail. You are the lender and not the borrower. You are the master and not the slave. Amen. 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 So before we wrap this up, let's talk about control and stewardship. I'm going to read what I wrote here. Dominion is about power, control, and ownership. Don't just dig for gold when you can own the gold mine. Don't just dig for gold when you can own the gold mine. Somebody type that in the comments. Don't just dig for gold. Own the gold mine. Think in terms of ownership. Yes, you can become wealthy by getting a high-powered executive position with a major Fortune 500 company. Yes, you can become wealthy by doing this, but don't think of working for someone for the rest of your life. Start to go into ownership, ownership, ownership. God gave us dominion to own, to properly steward his earth. And guess what? If you are working for somebody else, somebody else is the head and you are the tail, no matter how much money you're making. Amen. Amen. So start to think in terms of ownership, ownership, own the gold mine. It is not enough for you to dig for gold when God said the gold mine is mine. Have dominion over it. God owns the gold mine. He said, have dominion over it. Take that gold mine. Take that gold mine in the name of Jesus. The top earners of the world are the ones, and I spoke about this a little bit earlier, the top earners of the world are the ones who control the world. They control everything from what people eat, for example, which foods are available to certain people. Think in terms of Popeyes and KFC being in certain areas and Whole Foods being in other areas. They control what people eat. The top earners. The top 1% control. And God is saying he wants to raise his people to be able to have control in these areas, to be the top 1% and have dominion, to have dominion in these areas. Amen. Amen. They control where people live based on mortgages, mortgages that are available. They control the mortgage rates. They control the rents, pricing certain people out of certain neighborhoods. The top 1%. They have dominion. You understand where God is raising you to, where God is taking you for you to have dominion so that they can, things can be balanced, so that they can be fair and or tipped in the favor of God's people. Amen. Amen. Companies control, again, when you wake up, when you go to sleep, you know how many people say, I got to go to sleep early because I have to wake up in the morning. And why do you have to wake up early in the morning so that you can go to work for somebody that owns the company? Amen. So God is saying he wants us to have dominion. You have to have the mindset of dominion if you are going to attain biblical wealth. Glory to God. When the Lord told us to have dominion, he intended for us to control the areas and the ways of the earth. 
However, Satan has now taken the dominion that God gave God's people that we were supposed to have. But God is saying time is up for Satan. Time is up for Satan. There are certain areas. There are certain territories. There are certain systems. There are certain things that are being shaken in the earth where those satanic demonic people are are being thrown down from their positions of power, from their positions of wealth. I remember a few weeks ago posting in my Instagram stories about Mark Zuckerberg losing his wealth and people like Mark Zuckerberg losing his wealth. Why? Because there is a wealth transfer going on, but there's also a mindset transfer. Somebody put in the comments a mindset transfer, a mindset transfer, because guess what? Satan understands dominion. People who are wicked and evil and greedy, they understand dominion. They understand dominion. Even people that use the Bible against God's people and enslaved God's people, they understood dominion. But God is saying there is a mindset transfer where the people of God are waking up to the mindset and the biblical principles of wealth. This is yours, people of God. This is yours. It's no longer for the kingdom of darkness. And it never was. They just took it and ran with it. Will you take this and run with it? Will you take this and run with it and have dominion? Will you take this and run with it and be the head of the company? Will you take this and run with it and own the company? Will you own the company? Will you start the business with the mindset of dominion? Will you write the book with the mindset of dominion? Will you start the publishing company with the mindset of dominion? Will you build the hospital? with the mindset of dominion? Will you go into territories with the mindset of dominion, man of God, women of God that are in ministry? Will you go with the mindset of dominion that God has given you? If you will, type in the comments, I am taking with me the mindset of dominion. I am taking with me the mindset of dominion. People of God, when I caught this mindset, when I caught this principle, it changed the way I did business. It changed the way I thought about myself. It changed the way I saw other people in business. Amen. Because now I understand I am to rule. I am to reign. I am to control. And the Lord even began to speak to me about certain things he wanted me to dominate. And at first I thought it was the devil. Like, hold up, wait a second, wait a second. Until God took me to his word and said, my child, do you not see the mandate here in Genesis? Be fruitful and multiply, subdue the earth, replenish the earth, have dominion. Changed my life, sisters and brothers. Changed my life. Changed my life. Let's pray. Bow your heads, brothers and sisters. Father God, the God of all creation, the God of everything created, we thank you, God, that you have given us dominion. How graceful, how gracious, how generous are you, Lord, that you have given us dominion. And this isn't something, Father God, that is necessarily um, a, a future thing. God, when you first created man, you said, let us have dominion. Well, God, let us have it. Let us have it. Let us have it. Let us grasp a hold of it. Let us take a hold of it in the name of Jesus. It is already here. Let us have it, oh God. And I speak concerning and pray concerning the brothers and sisters watching this today. Oh God, that they will have that dominion, God, that you created them to have. That they will grasp a hold of it, Father God. And that you will renew their mind. You will renew their mind and give them the mindset of dominion so that they face that business with a different mindset. That they face that company with a different mindset today. I pray in the name of of Jesus, oh Lord, that you will bless the word that has come out of this altar, oh God. I see people rising up because of you, oh God, rising up because you have placed these principles in the Bible, in your holy scripture for us to grasp a hold of and use for the building up of your kingdom. I thank you, Father God, that right now demons are bound.
bowing down in the spirit. Demons are bowing down in the spirit, oh God, as you are doing your mighty work, as you are doing your mighty work on the behalf of your chosen ones, on the behalf of this royal priesthood, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Father God, for our portion. We thank you for our per- our portion. And we come into agreement with you that the portion is great and plentiful and bountiful in the name of Jesus. Now, Father God, I pray, Father God, concerning this word and concerning this person watching today, that you will always keep them humble in the name of Jesus, that you will give them the right spirit and that you will perfect everything concerning them so that they don't oppress your people, but that they work with your people. They love your people, even your animals. They care for them and steward them, even the fish in the sea and the birds of the air, that they are proper stewards of all these things, oh God. In Jesus' name, lastly, for me, God, I pray, oh God, that you do the same for me in terms of humility as you continue to raise me up, as you continue to increase me, as you continue to give me power and dominion that you have given me, oh God. I pray, oh Lord, that I will never abuse the power and the dominion that you have given me, this position and this platform that you have given me, oh God. I pray, oh God, and I dedicate it to you all the days of my life, all the days of my life to be a humble servant, a humble servant to build up your children, thereby building up your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you for humility. We thank you for our portion. We give everything that you've given us back to you now and forever. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. If you like to sow a seed on this word, on dominion, on dependency, um, if you want to just support the ministry, feel free to do so by locating the information in the description box. If you want to email me, if you want to connect with me on Instagram, I'm almost finished with my fast. So I'll be back posting and sharing on Instagram and in my stories in a few days here. My fast is up Sunday at midnight, but who is counting? <laughs> <laughs> so I will be back on Instagram. If you'd like to connect with me on Instagram, you can go ahead and find that information in the description box. Brothers and sisters, let us not forget what we are doing this for. This is to build the kingdom of God. Aren't you glad we get to do this together? We get to do this supported. We get to do this reinforced. We get to do this with the confirmation that comes from heaven. I'm glad about it. I'm glad about it. If you're glad about it, lastly, put it in the comments. I'm glad about it. I'm glad about it. I'm so glad you're here. Until the next video, go forth and prosper, ladies and gentlemen. I love you. I love you. God has great things coming for you. Your dominion is about to manifest in the earth because of what God is about to do. Know that it is for the building up of his kingdom. Never forget that. I love you. I'll see you in the next video. Amen. I'll see you next time. (laughs) Goodbye.